So the first thing uh, to consider here is that time is a very subjective experience, meaning um, its experience isn't fixed. We all know this, and uh, here's, a, here's a demonstration, for example. Um, time can pass extremely slowly. Especially, you know, screen time. Or time can pass pretty rapidly, you know. Uh, it has to do a lot with what is going on and where your attention is drawn. So time is very subjective. That's the first thing. One thing I want to clarify early on in that chapter 7 is it talks a bit about, or actually quite a bit about, linear and nonlinear time. Uh, and I want to clarify that a bit. There are three ways or three dimensions that we deal with this concept of linearity or nonlinearity, and I really don't want to get them all confused. One way is linear or nonlinear methods of storytelling, and that's what I'm going to wind up talking the most about. The second way is media that's considered linear or nonlinear media. I'm not going to talk a great deal about that, but I'll, I'll mention it. And the third way are applications that are considered nonlinear media applications. Uh, and I'll also mention. So let me do this in reverse order. I'm going to start with three and work my way down to one, because one is really where most of where this chapter and also chapter eight goes to. So nonlinear applications, when it's mentioned that they're uh, nonlinear applications, what they're talking about are applications like um, Final Cut Pro <clears throat> or iMovie or in the Windows area, uh, Movie Maker. And there are lots and lots of other nonlinear media applications. There's also uh, Pro Tools for audio. There's, there's tons and tons of them. It's safe to say we're, we're in the, rel the age of digital editing and um, post-production and, and pretty much everything in the digital realm is um, non-linear or random access. That, that is why we want to be in the digital realm partly is because we can deal with clips and stuff out of order and we can assemble them on a timeline and we can shift them around. Uh, we can think about them um, in lots of different ways. Um, it's also non-destructive editing, so you can make an edit, and if you don't like it, you can, uh, you know, switch things around. It's a lot of using proxies and things like that. Um, just to give you a little perspective is, you know, not that long ago when I was your age, um, the way that you edited videotape was to get a bunch of, uh, get two, at least two video decks together, and by um, pressing play on one deck and record on the other deck, and doing it at the right precise in and out points, you could dub on to another tape um, what the next piece in your sequence. If you screwed that up, if you made an edited mistake somewhere down the line um, and you edited into it, it, it meant that you literally had to start from the beginning with a fresh piece of tape and start editing again. Um, it was truly linear editing. Um, that was part of the kind of push um, to create nonlinear editing for um, uh, for computers and stuff like that, because videotape editing was such a such a bear. So then there's nonlinear and linear media, right? Um, so a nonlinear media would be a, a lot of games. Most games are nonlinear media. You're, there's no beginning, middle, and end per se. Um, or there may be a period in which you're kind of new at it, and then a period in which you're, you gain proficiency and so on. And some games do have ends. You know, you work your way through Mario Galaxy 2 or whatever, and, but they're replayable and you have different experiences each time you play it. Um, this is a screenshot from Minecraft, um, which is usually called more like a, a sandbox uh, uh, experience or a sandbox game. 
Linear media tends to be media that has a, a play button or a pause button or a stop button or a fast forward or a rewind button. Um, that means all the video stuff that you see and audio stuff. It also means recorded music and so on, radio programs and stuff. Um, radio, you don't all you have is a, is a channel selector and so on. Um, and that's generally bunched under linear media. Um, the distinction between linear and nonlinear become um, really much more um, shaded and kind of um, confused um, in the modern era. It, it's, it's not as simple as we thought it was going to be a long time ago. Um, clearly there are things that are linear, um, but by the way that we play them, YouTube videos and things like that, including them into Facebook pages and so on, they take on a kind of a random access quality to themselves. One aspect of linear media is, of course, it does have a beginning, middle, and end. And the issue is how much control do you have as a viewer or, on the other end, you as the producer creator, how much control you have over the start time and stop time and the running of it. Clearly, live programming puts most of the control, if not all of the control, in the producer creator, right? They're the ones that can uh, count down to airtime and put it up. And if you tune in at that time, great, you get to see it, but you can't necessarily easily stop everything and replay it, except with, dig with DVRs, you can do that a bit more now. Um, but the primary control is with the creators, the directors, and so on. Um, in the early days of media, of course, um, all, um, pr pretty much all the control was in the hands, uh, because pretty much all programming was live programming. Um, early radio drama was uh, live programming. Uh, early, early radio music was all live music. Um, there was a, a tendency to want to work with live musicians in studio because records, uh, playing back records of the air, was actually of an inferior quality early, early on uh, in radio. Um, original TV sitcoms, some of them in the 50s did um, uh, record to film, which was then played back for television because there was no videotape in the 50s. Uh, but some, many, were live. Um, and then uh, th our version these days are like live webcasts of concerts or things like that where you can tune in and you can watch live events. There's a subset of live programming which is real time, right? So real-time programming would be sports events and historical events, breaking news, live performances, and so on. Um, that's really the domain currently for television. Uh, more and more, we are um, tuning in um, online also for that kind of media. It's very important to understand that um, there was a time early on in creating media, especially film media, when there was not an opportunity to edit. Uh, or that editing was not conceived of. So the very first films tended to be uh, one take. And um, film was so new and it was such an astounding, spectacular kind of little magical media medium that um, that thrilled people. And in fact, some of the earliest filmmakers believed that film would never really take off as a storytelling medium because um, what could you do just by looking at one stream of images? Remember, early film didn't even have sound. Um, it's interesting to note that there, that, that single take form of media still exists. Um, most of our like viral videos uh, tend to be single take videos, you know? Um, not all, but many do, especially those that are produced by amateurs and, uh, um, and non-commercial interests and so on. Um, there is a certain um, genuineness and authenticity and realism to single-take video. So uh, it, it, it's not an entirely obsolete format, in fact. But once editing film was understood, was, was made, was discovered, and was then messed around with so, a huge um, a, amount of, of possibility, expressive possibility opened up. You know, film editing starts, you'll hear in another video, starts about the time of, uh, the same time the Wright brothers take off. And that it, it, it equals the same thing is, is that being able to edit film was being able to make film really take 
uh, really become a masterful storytelling medium. Um, film editing makes pa possible amazing things, flashbacks, flash forwards, parallel action, compressed time, expanded time, viewer omniscience. You can, as a viewer, you are everywhere um, where all the good stuff is happening on dramatically or comedically. Um, even visual and audio poetry, really an extraordinary invention, the video, the film edit. And film editing, the invention of the edit, um, really made possible film story time. Um, and I mean story time, not like it's story time, kids, come for stories, but I mean a, a sense of time that is um, part of a story. And that that time was like dough, it could be stretched out, it could be compressed, it could be made big, it could be made intimate and small. So that story time in film was as um, flexible and um, varied as, the, as, as much as the human imagination could make it. Really an extraordinary invention. It is important to understand that in linear and non-linear storytelling techniques, the way we tell stories in films, for example, that the place where the story really happens, although we refer to it happening on the screen, really where it's happening is in the minds and the imaginations of the viewers. And what happens on screen are elements that combine together with the audio, and it's the individual viewer who constructs meaning um, from those bits and pieces. Now, we don't all construct radically different meanings necessarily, but we do construct meaning. It's an active part of a viewer. Um, so, so this is a really important key to understanding why these nonlinear tricks and techniques actually work is because the viewer is working with you. And it's something that um, plays on our own um, inbuilt abilities of making sense of cause and effect and of uh, visual relationships, ancient, that have been part of our brains long before the invention of moder modern media.